Ah, oh, greetings. Well, I excited my dog. I tried to take some video, but I was so horrified at my own image that I... I have a cam. I suppose I need... Yeah, I'm kind of working on this thing here. I'm going to have to just walk away from... The piece I'm working on is called No Matrix Escape. I told you I wasn't going to go... I wasn't going to make it easy for you anymore. I told you I wasn't going to make it easy for you. This is just a lousy microphone picking up. What do you mean? When did I wake up? I never went to sleep. I saw something. People remind me. You know who I am. It's called acting. It's called direction. Well, I'm sure that intrigued you. I'm. Did that intrigue you, Trish? I'm sure that intrigued you. And. uh Really, the, 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 uh, I feel so bad that I couldn't get my... You can't go out there right now. You're still too young. I know that intrigued you. Because it was... I mean... You're going to want to understand. I think the connection between the weird coinkydink stuff that you say is gang stalking, targeted, all that. No, it's, I go much more into detail on that on a video that I have to, oh, I don't know. Gee, it took such a good image that it frightened me. I don't feel like my age, you know. I suppose I'm gonna have to really do some things. Well, maybe not a facelift, but <laughs> if you feel like it. Something to doctor it up for the video a bit. Let that be a motivator. But And we can't think of such terrestrial things right now. You know, the point is, is that what was going on there and now what you just heard? Right, there's a connection to outer space. There's a connection to the soul scalping. Don't get your soul scalped, get gang stalked. <laughs> How does that happen? What's the connection? Well, I'm in a position to connect it all up. The pyramid, the spacecraft, the little bug-eyed aliens, which I've seen close up and personal, and I can tell you this, I don't care how tough you are, you face that, it drills you right beyond your soul. It drills you right to a place that you can't believe. And the fear that you feel is something that you never felt before or since. And you wonder how in the world does that work like that? You start to understand that this world 
Oh, no, that, yes, or oh, that, that thing that uh, you heard uh, the voice of an actress there. Well, what's that all about? Um, there is no Matrix escape. <laughs> yes, that's what it's about. Oh, it goes on. Yes, it, it goes on. I think some of the most graphic horror ever done would be to make you listen to The Beach Boys, 1964. Or something like a 1970 game show. Because they have all those tricks up their sleeve to use all those game shows and different songs as, you know, along with lots of hypnotic images and voices. And even speaking your own voice right back to you. So you think it's your thoughts. And they're kaleidoscoping into your head. Millions of them. And you saw something. You saw a glimpse. And then all of a sudden all these little aliens in the form of, I guess, humans at this point, are gathering around you, working on you, along with the human counterparts of handlers and controllers, in the case of this person, to make sure that they arrive back home safely. It was all just a delusion. And never mind that, that person behind the curtain. No, never mind what's back there. You saw a glimpse to another world. You saw it. I've lived it. And there's people there. It's a whole different thing, isn't it? Yet you're stuck here. You know what? I don't know anyone that knows about this whole situation we're in. I don't know anyone that knows it. Oh, well, they all talk at it a little differently. But I'm right down there in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the blood and guts today in the bowels of the spacecraft, in the connection with the little robots and genetic manipulation and a lockdown situation on planet Earth, a farm harvesting what's contained within. A lot of people think they talk a good game. A lot of people think that Jesus will get them out without knowing Jesus, without understanding Jesus. They'll get out, there's no getting out of this. That's why the piece that I'm producing right now is called Horror. Because there is no getting out of it. Those who say they walk you know, the new agey spiritual path are deluded fools. They're not out of it at all. They are, they become a uh, signpost up ahead. Go back home. You can pretend to be as new agey as you want. You can put on this feigned spirituality like I saw this guy do the other day. Talking about some prophecy of the, of the future great new golden age of humanity. Humanity doesn't even matter. It's not the center of everything, like we were taught. What then, pray tell, is this all about? Well, for one thing, the true horror that I'm dealing with is about this woman who couldn't, who saw outside the matrix and couldn't get there because of the flood of people putting the Truman Show all back together, cleaning up the lights that fell from the ceiling, repainting the background so that it all looks real. I know you're all wondering about all this. I know you're all wondering about, well, so what do we do, Zeph? What do we do? 
Well, the number one, I've got to sort out a couple of things here. The number one thing is this targeting of people and all that. I mean, you've got to understand it's just because, you know, you didn't give your consent to the dragon, that's all. And, you know, that, that there are people born, just born not to do that. And it's just that they're born a certain way. And, you know, obviously there's a cost that you're paying. You don't realize you did anything wrong. But it's, it's that you're not one of them. That's the problem. You know, it's just that simple. I don't know what, you know, and when I say them, I mean a certain genetic type on the world. And I say us, I mean another genetic type. And the two do not mix. I, why can't you... Is it... Well, okay. So the whole point of the devil is to confuse the issue so much that you don't know which end is up because if you did you would then of course plot to get out of the matrix you would plan you would sojourn you would walk your way out don't look to the churches they'll stick you right back and you go I have a message from the Holy Spirit no you do not that's a demon Sit down and shut up till you become a member of this church. We'll tell you when the Holy Spirit speaks through you. And not until then, you got it? Dead man, die. So, don't like chewing your cut, eh? Just listening to the talk shows go by. Nothing changes. Keeps getting worse. No matter what anyone says or does, it's a curse. A curse is something that there's, there's no light in it. It just gets worse and worse. You beat them some more, Lord. Beat them. They're already, they're already goners, but beat them anyway. Beat the dead horses. Beat the dead horses. Beat the dead horses. They're already dead anyway. They're starving. They're dead. They're miserable. Beat them. Now beat them some more because of their disobedience. Beat them. Well, but that's not the Lord. Everything is the Lord, you idiot. Everything is the Lord. Or nothing is. You can't have it both ways. Or you're intellectually dishonest. So we got to deal with the Lord. Even if, you know, we are suffering and we don't understand why and we're going to him saying, please help me, Lord, and no help comes. We have to still go to the Lord. We still have to work it out somehow, some way. My objection is that most people will never figure out what we're talking about here today. But I wanted to draw the connection between the so-called gang stalking, which is a misnomer because... You're dealing with something that, yes, it has a physical component, just like the aliens have their humans that do their bidding on Earth. Sure. I'm going to call them aliens anyway. I don't care. Sure. Fine. But it's, it's, it begins in the spiritual arena. The, you know, the... The name Jesus, the path of Jesus, is probably, that's the only thing I can think of, and I've thought a lot about this, that gets you out. But you're going to be in pain, and the Lord's not, you know, he might relieve it, but he might not. So it's, it's, it's um, something you're just going to have to grapple with as you see more and more cruelty upon the earth. And you cry out to the Lord, please, Father, do something. Are you just going to let your children just starve and die? And if that happens to you, then it's just a test. Will you give up your faith? Will you stay loyal? Will you stay true? The only way to find that out is if you go to the other side or not. Not anything else. It's what you do, not what you say, pal. You got me? It's what you do, not what you say. You got me? what you do, not what you say. You say praise the Lord all you like. It's what you do that counts. Whether you go over there or not. 
Oh, there's all kinds of ways of going over there. One is, okay, you've got this great testimony about, you know, the SRA or something, you know, and you get a job and money starts coming in, you just suddenly, that testimony just goes away because you don't want to jeopardize your job because you've realized that the minute you pick at the little thing, all of a sudden it widens and there's your city and there's the school you went to and there's the corporation and there's the nation and there's the world and everything is intertwined. That's why when I hear people saying, we got handlers and controllers down the street, Satan's, we're going to pray or map them out, and now, like it's down there? You have got to be kidding me. No, no one short of a, of a total moron would believe something like that. It's everywhere. It could be you. Look in the mirror. Check it out. You know, we have to, either we treat the whole humanity or we don't treat it all. It's not down the street or this group over here or that group there. Or what I used to love to when Bush was in office, it was like the Bush family. They're doing, they're, 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 they're doing devil worship out there in the woods somewhere. Well, maybe they are, but I mean, it's not that you don't look to them as being the cause. Or the military industrial complex or people of great wealth who are sold out to the devil. That's a cliche. That just means thank, they ain't escaping the matrix. That's what that means. And you will not do it via the singularity. No, no way, no how. Never, never, and never. Thank you. Kurzweil is another moron. Thank you. Next. New Agers are pretty much morons. You, you get duped by these 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 mavens of, of of Moronville. I mean, basically, they just they put on the thing about the UFOs and they do the, the the you know the psychic reading for the United States going into the future, and they get millions of people just just hearkening in, just just tuning in, and they sell all the books about the end time Armageddon and this and that and the other thing, and they're tuning in and tuning in and tuning in. But I think what we're all missing is the obvious. And I'm, gra I'm dealing with it in, you know, and I don't know, it's maybe the piece I'm working on. It's probably about 10 minutes long. It's a, a dramatized... Oh, no, it's, it's, if you understand, I doubt any of my, I mean, maybe there's three or four people that might get it. I decided to go ahead and do art and, and, and realize that most people won't get what I'm doing. But there will be some, so I'm going to play to them. I can't hold myself back anymore. You know, I, I was given gifts and things that I need to use, even if, you know, no one understands me. I'm just going to have to do that. Well, for example, would you understand something like, um, uh, you know, a scene where there's like a, a satanic orgy going on and, and a big screen of the... Um, uh, of the sound of music, the hills are alive with the sound of music playing, enhancing the orgy. Would you understand that as art? I don't think you would. So, you know, but I'm, you know, to me, that's true horror. That's, that, that, that's the extreme, that, that's the end all and be all. So it's a valid piece because it's so extreme and so disturbing. Whereas just having ghouls on the screen would not be disturbing. Right? Right? Seeing the innocence up against the thing, you get it? Okay, well. No, no most people don't. I, I don't know what most people's comprehension is anymore, but uh, most people think that World War II uh, was um, the first Gulf War. <laughs> Oh, you're so conquered, America. <laughs> Lock, stock, and barrel, buddy. So that's why they bring the Jade Hellman and all the stuff, because you're, you know, because they own you. So they're, you know, they have to teach you who the boss is, right? So it's a conditioning process. 
Oh, most of the people saying there's no danger, there's nothing here, to, nothing to see here, move along. They're, they're so far gone. I just, when I see them at Whole Foods and stuff, I just start laughing and, you know, shoving my card into theirs and just making a, you know, just acting like a bumbling fool, you know, and, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a good time at their expense. Well, all you have to do is indicate that you can see them, you know, just a little kind of a nod or a wink or something, you know, just kind of a, and then you'll see them run all the way across the, yeah, it's funny, you know. Well, they don't all do that, you know, some will sit there and throw a little whammy on you, you know, they'll start, or the kind of the gang stalking I like is where they all of a sudden, all the carts coalesce and block you so you can't get out, they come from both sides of the aisle and they block you so you can't get around them, suddenly all in unison and then you look at them all and they're all zombies, they don't know why they, they park their carts right there, but who's running the show does. See, that's what you gang stalking people don't understand. And, you know, look, I'm, I'm just willing to take the gloves off right now and I'm going to have to sock it to you. Guess what? If your version is right, then where's the room where they all meet? Let's go there right now. And the answer is, there is no room where they all meet. And there never was a room where they all meet. So if that's true, then you have to look at the bigger picture. The spiritual picture, which means just basically technology in another dimension and uh, realize that it's all being controlled from there. Well, every once in a while these entities possess one of these people. They say something to you that, is, that they, 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 they know where you lived when you were a kid or something like that, which they couldn't know. You know, they'll say something in the background or they'll, you know, one of the more subtle forms of this came when I, I remember I went to this beach club to have a meeting about writing a screenplay and the guy down there was an actor and he was in a cabana down there and the producer was there and we we're going to meet down there. And I had been in this beach club when I was a kid and I, I got kicked out for you know various reasons. But uh, here I was as an adult all these years later, you know what I mean, after having lost touch with it all and having to come back to L.A. to find out what the hell happened to me there. And so there I'm meeting, and um, you know, it's just, just, it's just us and us. To, you know, we're just sitting there, please, please, in this stupid cabana, in this stupid place that I thought I'd never return to. And uh, there was a sandwich that I used to order when I was a, a child, you know, because it was recommended by my father, by my mother. I, I can't remember exactly. But I, I would, you know, I kept ordering it over and over, and it, it was called a Carlos Special. And it had, like, it was on rye bread, and it had, it was kind of like, you know, multi meat and cheese and stuff, but they had a special layer of coleslaw on there, under the rye bread, to kind of give it, instead of, like, mayo and stuff. So that gave it a kind of a unique, you know, flavor. Well, the guy there, that's this actor guy, which I'm not going to mention who he is, he's, you know, fairly famous, I guess. So... He, right in front of me, looks me in the eye and he says, guy, the guy comes down to take our order, you know, because for you in a cabana, you can, you can order stuff and they'll, the waiters come strolling along to take your order. It's very elite. <laughs> it's very, very clubby. And so there you are. And, and he looks right at me. He goes, I'll have a Carlos special, which isn't even on the menu. It's not on the menu to today's menu. I don't think it might be, but it was a chef there named Carlos, and it was it's Carlos special. Uh, he's long moved on. So, but no, he didn't look at a menu. That's the thing I'm saying. It, it wasn't on the menu. He didn't look at the, but he just said it, and it was as if it was rehearsed, like like he knew that I had that when I was a kid to do something that would be familiar to me. You know, and I looked at him and I acted like I didn't know what was going on, but I mean I was traumatized at that point. You understand that one? See, if you don't understand what I just said, you don't really know what you're talking about, unless you've been right there, right, right in where, the, where the, both barrels are against your head. A Carlos special, there's, it's not on the menu. At least it wasn't that day.
what eventually happened is I had a falling out with the producer and he went and wrote a different screenplay of, of my screenplay and went and filmed a movie, which failed. And, uh, and I said, you shouldn't have cut me out of the deal. <laughs> He he cut me out. You know, I wrote the whole story up, and he he basically cut me out of it because I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't work for free. I actually I asked for some money, so I mean, t damn me for that, right? Well, you know, it's okay. I went into a screening of it at a, the American Film Market, and and I, you know, was sitting there. And I, after I saw his version of what he did, I was really happy I wasn't involved, you know. But uh, it was okay, you know. These are these are people that are kind of God fearing, but they're kind of lost in the matrix, and um, and they know everything. They know all about the Satanism, all about break on through the other side because they have. They know all about being a part and parcel of society because they are. They know all about being, you know, to keep their position in society, they got to follow the rules and shut the F up. And they do. And then they know all about how to traumatize you with gang stalking. Which just comes natural for them? No, it's because they are, it's, 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 it's in them as a spirit, as a thing that goes in them. When they are conformed to the world, what happens is their soul is taken out and another, like, oversoul type thing is put in. Their personality changes. They're still kind of who they were in a way, but they're someone different now. And they can be very predatory and they can be very dangerous. But oftentimes you'll be dealing with, you know, pillars of our society. And what you won't realize, you go, well, how could you be engaged in such evil as causing innocent children to die? And the answer is, they're not in touch with the fact that they're doing that. I know. Kind of gets them off the hook. Um, but, you know, my purpose here is not to condemn the world. But really to present to the world the way out of the matrix. And, you know, these guys, in, in this little anecdote I'm saying... These guys knew the Lord, both of them, but they had also chosen to remain conformed and a friend of society. And remember, a friend of the world is an enemy of God and vice versa. You just can't have it both, you know, so they, they never came out of it. They tout Jesus, but they never really came out of the world. They were never separated or sanctified or, I guess, saved. But they knew Jesus was the answer, which is a start. Now, in the case of the one fellow, I think I haven't seen him on television or anything. So I guess you know maybe he's old now, and maybe now it's maybe now he he'll be faced with this task of well, what do we do with our lives when we get older? It's like well, there's only one thing to do. You got to get out and you got to get other people out, but most people don't make it. And then you have to realize that and go to Lord, 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 Lord. Oh my God, what in the world? Don't you, you hate everyone? Is that it? I mean, what, how do I look at this? And you got to grapple. Now, the true answer of the matrix is, of course, because this world is a simulation. It's not real. And so when you perceive all these minions and millions and billions of people going to hell you have to realize that they're not real you know you're the only thing that's real and this is like a virtual reality test for you and that's the answer to your riddle seriously I and mean, people have said it in sci-fi films and sci-fi stories uh it really is that so before complaining on to god about the collective realize there is no collective realize that it's all like a hologram and everything you perceive and all the people you perceive outside of you as as close as they feel to you they're not really a question yourselves are these people really in my life is this really my wife is this really you know and sure she's your wife sure those are your friends but you have to realize that they're not really real and 
even though they'll, they'll say, wait a second, I am too real in your life. Yet they can speak because it's you speaking to yourself. And I know that's really going to be impossible for people to get their head around because it's, 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 it's so good, the deception, that you just can't, you know, it's true for everybody, you know, whatever everybody means. So therefore, you come into this world alone. You gotta, if you want to get out of the matrix, you do it alone. There's no walking with anyone through it. It's you and your God and whatever you are, you bring that and you, and you just got to cut a swath. Let the chips fall where they may if you wind up with no friends at all, no family, no nothing. You know, um, life is worth it. But I think the walk, the, see, I think the matrix is hate. I think out of the matrix is love. So I believe that, you know, I, I, I like to liken it to, well, at the end of this race, there'll be a, all your family and friends will be waiting for you to cheer you on to the finish line. I'd love to think of, you know, that's what they have in Satanism. All the family and friends cheer the kids on into the finish line. Except that's not the kind of finish line I want. <laughs> because that finish line means you're here forever. You're just a slave. And there is no future for you. I mean, you can go through the motions and go to your your parties and your things and, you know, you go on your yachts and think, oh, this is life. But it's not life. There is no life in this thing. This is a simulation. It's like a virtual flying, you know, like when you go fly. And they have a you know, a virtual, you know, they have a little cockpit you climb into and you fly and there's the airport, you know, and you have visuals of everything you would have in flight and the plane will behave the way it will in flight and so you have everything in that simulation that approximates reality so much that it's just almost an identical experience. But it's not real. You're not flying. You're on the ground. And that's basically what you're dealing with. Now, I know a lot of people who feel stalked and picked on and bullied. And I, I'm not mean to bust your chops, guys. I, look, what I'm trying to do here is, 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 is bust the illusion wide open. Not bust you. I understand, man. Look, since I was like 15 or so, I've been dealing with this, this whole thing. And um, I can tell you it's, it's hooked in with the aliens. It's, you know, they run it. Whatever they are, they run it. And all the satanic ritual abuse and all this stuff and, and the gang stalking and all that, it's all related. It all comes from the same location. The aliens, the ritual abuse of children, the murders of children, obviously the killing of innocents, the um, persecution of Christians and, and you know people that are really seeing the truth. By Christians, I mean, someone said it the other day, I heard this term, free-range Christian. Um, yes, those are the ones that are real and are really Jesus freaks. Is what, they're not Jesus freaks, but I mean, they're, they're Je they belong to Jesus. You know, so they pursue who they belong to, just like the world pursues who it belongs to. I don't pursue the things the world pursues. I mean, I pursue, you know, uh, trade, I guess, I suppose, and, and capitalism, you know, and, and, and success to a certain degree. But I mean, at the end of the day, if, I go, if something goes wrong, I, when I go boo-hoo, I don't go to, you know, friends or family. I, don't, I go only to one source. When it all goes, when, it's, when I ask, well, what should I do, Lord, now? And then I go, that before I do it, I have to pray to the Lord to either do it or not do it or ask the Lord, please, in these endeavors that I go into, would you please guide me? It just becomes eventually to the point where you can't do anything without the Lord. No, you know, this, this Jesus thing, the way they've got it in the churches, and this whole, you know, like running up against the, the kind of evangelical, you know, um, the Bible is the inerrant word of God, and all, all, the, all the cliches and the rapture cliche, all the rest of it. I, to me, that is the matrix, and that's just putting you right back in it again. 
the end times Bible prophecy, end times Christian programming to bring about more war and destruction upon the earth. I just, you know, it's just not, not something that's going to be helpful right now. People say, well, the real escape is within. It's like, yes, it's the, but within, when you're in, when you are in a virtual reality situation, within is a metaphor of within. It's not really within. So that's where a lot of people are wrong because they feel they're, they feel they're real and they feel their surroundings are real. They feel the people around them are real. And because they do, they buy in, they make the first mistake of cognition, which is to believe it's real. And then you go from there. But see, what's happened is you've gotten shackled in. Now, I'm saying all this because it's my job to say all this, because it's my job to tell you what I've discovered from, because when you're in my line of work on the, on the artistic side, it's our job to figure this stuff out. It's not that far removed from, you know, theology and philosophy and things like that. But, I mean, the idea is we're pursuing this. It's not acceptable to me to be, you know, to just be close but no cigar. It's not acceptable to... Um, you know, almost make it, but not quite. It's not acceptable to me to um, be, you know, stuck in the matrix indefinitely. It's not acceptable to me to go round and round and round being reborn over and over again in this hellhole. Hellhole meaning a virtual reality, not real. I want real. So my character glimpses a a real world out there and she wants it and then oh boy she steered away from it she steered right away from it I was also thinking about because because this this character is an actress I was thinking about actors now obviously if you're really successful I mean one thing you have to be as an actor is you have to be in the matrix and under control because you know you you've got to be able to bust loose into one kind of thing or another but I mean they're very important until they get replaced by machines in the next 10 20 years and then there will be no more 20 million dollar salaries to anybody but um, or 30 or 50 or whatever it is it's you know it's 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 you know completely ridiculous but it does do one thing and keep these people unfortunately glued into their false lives with a false narrative and a false view of who they think they are, which is false. Now, they're, they're, they're chosen because they can convince others of a narrative that's being spun to get you to believe this is real. And they will pay them handsomely, but it doesn't matter because the money they pay them comes right back to them anyway. You see. I know I'm on it today because I'm, I'm getting all kinds of um, confirmations. Well, no, this this I, this particular horrific piece I'm working on shows you how they keep you in the matrix and that you do not escape. Okay, got me. If if people could escape, all the New Agers would have already. They didn't. Their New Ageism kept them there. The first mistake of, of religion, and especially new religions like New Ageism, is to buy into this as being real. That's the first mistake. To take this as a, as a paradigm of reality, to take this as, instead of a projection, to take it as a, as a, a literal uh, truth. So when someone says within, without, it doesn't matter because it's all illusion. It's, it doesn't matter because... Um, most people that talk to you and email you and whatnot, everything they say is designed to keep you in the matrix, even though they may be a trusted ally. Ultimately, they don't exist. That's the thing that's so bizarre about this. But there they are, and they talk like they do exist, but they don't really. Just like I don't really exist in their reality, but there's a similitude of me existing. You know, it's all projection, but it's so fancy, you know, that you that it's so real that we, just like the airplane thing, we believe it. So the first mistake is when you think, okay, like on the stalking thing, and that's bullying, right? Stalking is bullying. 
the idea is to shame you and to humiliate you and hopefully you'll kill yourself. Um, number one, what's happening to you comes out of the psychic realm. And it's funny how all the gags that they do correspond exactly with the fears in your head. So there's a great symmetry between the two. For example, the Carlos special sandwich. There's no way he could have known that. But you see, you see how they could hit you with that? And then, of course, to what happened to me, totally traumatized. Right? How'd they do that? That was, all, that was all a stalking thing. It was all like a setup, an ambush. How the heck did they do that? Half of stalking is ambushing. So, you, you know, you walk into a situation and they're all waiting for you. Did they meet somewhere ahead of time? No, of course not. And they happen to be doing something or eating something or saying something that has corresponds with your own life, which they couldn't possibly know. Which they couldn't possibly know. Right? Now I'd watched some video that someone sent and, and you know, of this guy that, you know, was in, I guess he's in California feeling he's being stalked and he's thinking these homeless guys are doing it. And nothing is showing up on the video. So a casual observer would say, well, this guy's crazy. And that's further proof, you know, further proof on my side of things. You know, the way I'm looking at it, I think is the right way. Because it's all emanating from another place. Just like had I had a video on that sandwich. There's the audience would never know what I was thinking or how it was affecting. It was all internal. But it happened to be the one thing you couldn't do. That's the one thing you couldn't say. That was the one thing you could not order in front of me. I think it had been out of circulation for a long time. You, you, you know, and maybe it was just a coincidence, but, uh, but the effect was, it uh, took me out. I think I barely got out of there in one piece, but um, I've been toe to toe with death a few times. Oh yeah, yeah, they can kill you. They can pre preferably get you to kill yourself. These very people then go to church and seem to have no memory of all the death surrounding them that they've caused. It's the most um, bizarre thing, but that would put these people on the level of what, zombies? Therefore, someone to listen to, someone to confide in? Hell no, you don't confide in people like that. But are they very common? They're everybody. Everybody that's, you know, conformed to the world is, is, is them. So they're all potentially your stalkers, but then again, they, this is a projection. All this is being tightly controlled. Everything you see, everything you touch, how, coming up with that sandwich thing, it's all being done through another dimension. Would, if I strangled this guy and said, you're torturing me, How'd you do, why did you say that, that sandwich? He would have said I was crazy. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Now, I had that sandwich a long time ago. It was recommended to me by so-and-so. It was a sandwich they used to have here, and I've rather enjoyed it, so I've been ordering that every time for years. Who are you to start strangling me? You know, you're, you're crazy, Zeph. <laughs> See? But so, so you understand. Let's go to the next level. So you understand that whole theater thing, that whole, that whole thing that just happened, which if I videotaped, someone would call me insane because there'd be nothing on the videotape for anyone to see. Just like there wasn't in, in the video that I've, I looked at of this homeless guy. There was nothing there. The person who sent it knew exactly what he was talking about. But uh, again, to an observer, um, there's nothing going on. It just sounds like he's crazy. 
because he's talking about things in another world that are not on the videotape. Oh, I know there's organized stuff to where they're surveilling you and they, you know, you put a video camera on your house and they, they come around and when you're gone, they, they, they break in and they, you know, then you videotape what was moved or whatever, the little subtle things. And, you know, there's that kind of, you know, attempt to drive someone insane. Yeah, there's that. That, that's when the neighborhood is, you know, uh, involved, where the neighborhood watches when you leave and they, then they organize their, their whole trip. I had, you know, I had that going on and I, I was just, uh, you know, I asked someone about the, oh, we all know what's going on. You do? You know what's happening to me? Oh, yes, we know what's happening to you. Well, what's going to be done about it? Nothing. We know what happened. It all led to a big blowing up. People almost died. People almost got shot. Yes, we know what happened. Well, do you want to get shot? Or, you know, are you going to back this stuff off? And the answer, do you, well, do you want to hear the answer? The answer is we, we don't control it. We can't back it off. Plus, we're not in control of ourselves, so we don't know what we're going to do. You know, I don't know when the call's going to come to get in a car and go to someone's house and walk around in there and put, you know, cameras and microphones in there or whatever. I don't know when that's going to happen. But if that call comes, I got to participate or I lose my place in society and I could lose my income. So I got to either look the other way on it or participate in it. But I've, I have to be a policeman at some point to move up to the next ladder of society. Gang stalking just simply being a ladder to success on the ladder of society. Am I making myself perfectly clear that it's it's worldwide and 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 all the coincidences are coming from a you could say, well, that's the spirit, but now let's just put it this way. It's a very advanced technology. Rather than saying it's the spirit. It's a very advanced technology and these beings are running a business here and you're the commodity and basically if you're if you don't think you're a commodity then you can be targeted and that's all that's there's nothing more to it than that I mean there's that's a lot but I mean that's the whole bottom line so you need to push further into the Lord despite your feelings about the Lord for all the pain and suffering one now you just got to Go like a child and just go, look, I know you're the only one that can help me. Please help me. And that's all that you can do. There is nothing else you can do. You can't follow this thing because a lot of it's internal in you. Like, you know, that's why if you go film it, you're not going to get anything on your camera because to another person, it's just filming someone standing there, or, you know, or walking around or, you know, going back to a place where they were a few minutes ago and you go, oh, you see? <laughs> and the people watching are going, you're nuts. You're just nuts. I'm out of here. Well, you know, they also torture you. You know, they, they, they get inside your head, whatever your weakness is, whatever. They, they try to torture you with that. Sin life, you know, they try to get you to repeat your sin, then shame you guilt and shame and all that it's 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 across the board it's not just people kind of milling about or finding out that all your friends are really enemies because they're all kind of in satan's game and they're all just really um you know handling you controlling you you know and and uh why because they get something out of it they do it for social position and money if they don't do it then they could lose their position and lose money so you don't understand that because you're innocent. But uh, once they're on that treadmill, man, they got to stay on that thing. At the same time, the treadmill is not real. There is no Satanism. There is no uh, nefarious conspiracy. There is no matrix, they will say. But make no mistake. You know, it's about you. And you're the one that has to take responsibility for your own life. And if you're afraid to go out, 
you're afraid to go to certain certain places. I mean, if it starts getting like that, then they win. You're going to be tested, you know. And many have been tested with health, some financially, some, you know, with 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 people that were friends turning into enemies and stalking you, you know. Look at the Randy Quaid thing with the Star Whackers and the he got run out of town and run out of the United States completely. They took his passport away and he's stuck in squalor in Canada because he spoke publicly about something that you are not to speak of. But he wasn't in on it. He wasn't part of it. He acted. He was in the acting trade. Very good actor, but he trusted them and he got screwed and he wasn't in on it at all. And then when he tried to speak up about it, they just made him a, a social pariah that you'll never work again in this town. And then had the government collude on, in on it and took his passport away, him and his wife. And they're sitting in a little one one room, I don't know what it is, in Alaska, in, in, in Canada, with no ability to work in Canada and no ability to work in the United States, all their identities stripped. And um, no one's going to give them a break. You see, understand the, the mistake Randy Quaid made was that he didn't see, it's not just his business manager, it's not just Rupert Murdoch that he was saying was responsible. It's not just, you know, people colluding. It's the world, you see. It goes to, well, because the people that are established, I, I, I suppose, in a certain way, and and really, you know, wielding power or whatever, you know, they they they, they do so in darkness and cover provided by others to make sure that, you know, they don't find out that, you know, all these people could be, you know, guilty of something. And there's a lot that aren't. I mean, there's, just because if you're in business, that doesn't mean you're, you know, a stalker or someone that would collude in criminal activities. Um, but in entertainment and things like that, there's there's a lot of that. And people don't say anything because they want to get a paycheck. Because let's just widen it. Oh, it goes to Rupert Murdoch. Oh, okay, it goes to the entire sports and gambling business. Oh, oh, it goes to television worldwide. Oh, it goes to all new newspapers worldwide. Oh, it goes to the whole media. Oh, it goes to the whole military industrial complex and the entertainment complex and the political complex. And it goes to the whole world. You shut up, you ain't getting no paycheck. Well, they'll say shut up because you're going after specific. I, I don't do it that way. The way I do it is perfectly acceptable. I just say it's the world system, and um, you know that includes all of us in it, and we're all we're all in it in some way or another. And we're you know some people are struggling to, to get out, some aren't. No, I like. You know, I like, you know, but I, I see what I've always realized about this world is that I'm passing through. I can't take it with me anyway. So, I mean, I understand that already. And um, so I think the goal is to get out of the matrix. I think that's really the worthy goal, not spending time, you know, pursuing other people and trying to get even or get, you know, justice or whatever. I think that's the mistake. I think the the greatest thing that a person could do is get out in, in freedom. And um, it seems to be the hardest thing to do because, again, we keep buying into all this as being real. But, yeah, when you say the whole world, you know, what do you mean? I mean, and I, I literally mean the world. And then the world is an illusion. And the perceived evil that I see out there, yes, I see evil going on. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's still a simulation. And it's still, how do I, the important thing, my point is, is how do I react? And do I have a strong faith? Am I, am I walking by faith and not by sight? Am I doing those things? And if I'm not, because I'm so busy reacting, then I'm losing. 
If I am, then I'm winning. All right, well, I'm going to just keep it short and sweet and to the point. And uh, this is kind of what I was dealing with today on the video, which which I, I don't know if I'll put it up, but uh, yeah, hopefully this one will get up there. But I don't know. I pray to God, did I do anything wrong? Did I, I, probably, I was pretty harsh. Listen, here at the Zephyr Report, we, we don't, let me put it this way. We are, we may not be a friend of the world system, but we're a friend of humanity. That's why I do the podcast I do, to help humanity, because every, I don't care how far, how much money you make, how successful you are, you still have the same problem in the end, you're going to die. And, um, you know, it, it, there's, it's, it's, well, I can't explain it to people. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's uh, a lot of people, a lot of the, the earth dwellers think, well, I'll die if I'm reincarnated. Uh, great. I hope I get a better, a better lot in life. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's just like a lot of the Asians are like that. I, I'm, it just isn't, I, I'll keep dealing with it. But as art, I think I've kind of dealt with it in a way of, with music as being, um, and and kind of a, a the, the tableau I've created. It's, it's almost like I've done radio theater, is what I'm kind of doing now, with music combined and also sound design that you would find in feature films or television. So I know I have those skills, you know, those editing and audio skills, so I'm, I'm bringing all that to bear and telling my story about a woman who sees a glimpse outside the Matrix and how they um, jump on her to, to, to put Humpty Dumpty back together to make sure she never gets out, ever. Now, you know, come on home, Dorothy. Here's your aunt and uncles and, you know, here's your dad and here's your mom, here's your, you know, here's your friends and here's your little dog and... You know, so good to have you home, Dorothy. So good. So very, very good. Yes, Dorothy. We love you, Dorothy. And we want you to know that you're never going to have to go away from home ever again, Dorothy. Not ever again. Isn't that good? <laughs> That's true horror, my friends. Where does it get more horrific than that? 